I'm going to share with you some uh, insights of this project, Ciudad Olimpia Valdivia, on behalf of the whole team behind it. Um, so <clears throat> I will start with a brief overview of the project. Uh, then I will describe some of the design and implementation details. And I will end uh, discussing the current status and, and future work. Uh, so, um, so what is uh, the Ciudad Olimpia Valdivia project? First, it is a work in progress. <laughs> uh, we, we should have been presenting the results of the first phase at this time, but uh, we have been affected by several crises. Uh, first, the social unrest in Chile, and then the, the worldwide uh, pandemic crisis. Um, so let's start by introducing the team. So we are four people. Um, Leaded by uh, Mary Grace Valinas. She conceived the main idea of the project and she also takes care of all the GIS and spatial planning aspects. Our main developer is Jose Gatica. Uh, he also entertains us with his music performances. It, it used to be live, but uh, now because of the pandemic, it's only by streaming. Um, Camila Lago Marcino, uh, she's in charge of the topics re related to environmental education and recycling. And I try to keep the design consistent. And at the same time, I try to look for the best ways to process the data, hopefully adding some components of computational intelligence. Um, OK, so why are we developing this tool? Uh, it is um, sort of a um, short story. Please be patient with us. We will get to the tool right away. Um, so since the tool is closely related to the city of Valdivia and its people, I will give you some little background information about it. Uh, so for those who doesn't know the, the city, it's a very beautiful, small city in the south of Chile. It's almost at the same latitude as San Martin de los Andes, a few hours away, if you don't consider the time spent at the border. Uh, of course, it's also close to Bariloche. Uh, it has an important shipyard industry, uh, agriculture, forestry, and aquaculture activities. It is also an important touristic destination in Chile. Uh, it has a lively uh, cultural life. There are important music and film festivals which held out every year uh, in, in, the, in the city. And also one of the major universities in Chile is based in, in Valdivia. Uh, on the other hand, I, I must say, the, that people who live in Bolivia are very conscious, environmentally speaking. Um, so how did this start? Uh, back then, around 2009, Mary Grace noticed that uh, when the waste collection system in, uh, service in the city was disrupted, at that time it was because of a worker strike, uh, the garbage accumulates on the street. And people in general seem to not care, they, everyone, including myself, was we were just waiting for the service to resume operation because we are used to that, to the service working. Uh, but it, it was a bit annoying that the, the, the garbage accumulates on the street. And it, it happens a couple of time, times afterward. Um, so in, in 2018, uh, Valdivia was selected as, as one of the Chilean cities for the Wheel of Cities contest. And in that occasion, Mary Grace submitted a very rough idea of something to improve the waste collection and avoid it, the problems when the, the system is disrupted. Um, almost at the same time in the city, a consortium was formed to promote uh, Valdivia to become a smart city. This consortium was formed uh, by the Universidad, so Universidad Austral de Chile, and the Faculty of Engineering, where I work, the Municipality of Valdivia, a local development NGO, and a couple of uh, local companies. And the municipality seemed to have liked the idea, submitted to the Wheel of Cities contest, and included it in a list of funding opportunities to develop proof of concept small projects related to smart city. So then um, Mary Grace took the, the chance to submit a proper project uh, to the proposal to develop a tool focusing on the disruptions and uncertainties of, uh, of the service and uh, also related to uh, something to tackle a 
problem we have in the city, which is the illegal dumping microsite. So places uh, where people go and, and throw garbage without permission. Of course, it's in the middle of the city. Um, Okay, so the solution uh, is all about connecting people and let the information flow. So basically, we will we will have the users uh, over here, uh, which can access the system through web or Android applications to this information system. They will be able to see the location of the uh, waste collection tracks in real time in a dynamic map. They will be able to select a point in the map and the closest collection route will be shown and the estimated time of arrival to um, uh, position later in the in the route uh, will be calculated. The users will be uh, able to access uh, educational uh, information related to environment uh, to the environment and recycling also how to manage household waste in a better way and the users will be able to submit uh, the reports of illegal dumping microsites when they find one uh, with photos and geolocation through a form in the in the applications the on the other hand the municipality can notify the users about changes or last minute uh, updates on the service and for future versions we would like to to add uh, more features such as such as waste uh, segregation, which is not currently implemented in, in, in the service uh, in the city, and the smart waste containers. But we need to hard work for, for that to work. Um, so at, at the beginning, the, the project was born from the perspective, perspective of the users. And the idea was a bit fussy, uh, probably very idealistic and most probably not feasible to carry out in, in the with the specified resources and of people and time. Uh, so through this consortium, this is Smart City Valdivia consortium, we had access to the people in the municipality who actually run the service, and we managed to to meet with them before the pandemic. It was in person, as you can see uh, here. Uh, but later we had to move to uh, online meetings only. Uh, but uh, we we had very good uh, uh, flow uh, of information with them. They provided very valuable and fundamental feedback, and that actually helped us to make our project achievable and feasible. They also put us in contact with the company which provides the satellite positioning of their tracks, um, and they granted full access. I will talk a, a little bit more about that later. Um, Together with the municipality, also we selected a neighborhood in the city, um, which would, didn't have uh, many complexities in terms of the of, of the service uh, compared to other neighborhoods. So this this particular place is ideal to test the system without any further uh, perturbances uh, outside our own mistakes in the in the development. Uh, so as soon as we, we had these, these neighborhoods selected, we designed and then conducted a survey to establish a baseline in terms of the knowledge of the user with respect to the service, also the interest in the proposed solution. Uh, most people uh, the, uh, only knew the very basics about the, the collection service, basically the day and the time, uh, the, the day only that the truck will, will pass through their house and almost nothing else and they were all very interested in testing the application and also had the resources to do that basically we would need internet access and some device to run the application either a web browser or the mobile app so, okay let's move to the to the, the implementation details so a, a little bit on that um okay so we have two two basic uh, ways to access the the system. One is through a web interface. The other, through uh, mobile application Android. Uh, so the the web interface was developed using uh, Bootstrap uh, CSS framework uh, in order to build a responsive, mobile friendly web front end. Originally, we were writing the logic in JavaScript, but now we moved 
to Python coding using the Brighton interpreter. It's a very nice solution to run Python code in the browser. Uh, the dynamic map showing the, the tracks is uh, rendered using leaflet, controlled directly from the Python code. Um, so the, the track positions, which are uh, provided by the third party, uh, are collected by a component built using Fiverr and then uh, republished into the, the clients our clients. Uh, Fiware, for those who don't know it, is an open source platform for smart anything, smart agriculture, smart industry, smart cities, smart houses. And they provide very well-defined interoperational interfaces. Actually, we could have developed the whole application using Fiware, but we are just starting to, to learn about it. So only one component is, is done with, with this uh, framework. The form to report the illegal dumping microsites is handled by the very well-known form mail script, uh, in this case, the PHP version by Tektite. And here on, I, I will highlight, this is a test version of the dynamic map <clears throat> uh, running with offline data, not, not the real-time data. And uh, somewhere there, I don't know if you can see, it's a bit small, you, you can see the track and the blue line is the part of the route which the track has already traversed and the red line corresponds to the remaining of the route. And we have been doing some uh, distance cal calculations also. Um, the mobile app on the other hand has uh, originally was developed using Ionic and Angular frameworks together. You can see here the main screens of the current version of the, of the mobile app. Um, however, the the um, the workflow with with the Ionic and Angular has not been friendly enough for us. Uh, for other people, it works, but for us, it's, it's, it hasn't. So we are now moving to Python coding also for the app using Kiwi, the Kiwi uh, framework, which allows cross-platform development. So we can uh, develop on 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 uh, see the results on the desktop and then move to the to the um, uh, to the mobile uh, version and see almost the same. So uh, these these are the components from uh, that interact with the users. Uh, so from the point of view of the municipality, which is the service provider, uh, the the municipality has to provide uh, two two main data stream. So one is the service status updates. So if there is any disruption, change in schedules, etc. And we wanted, we didn't want to add a new tool for the municipality uh, to learn. And we we decided to, to build something unobstructed for them. So they were already using Instagram and Twitter um, for communicating some things. So we de developed um, a Python script running in our server, which uses the Twitter official API to catch the posts from the municipality user with a specific hashtag um, designated to work with, uh, with us. And uh, we'll collect this post and then push it to the, to the users using either the web notification API or the Android notification API, depending on the case. And we are testing a couple of, of, of open source solutions to do that right now. I will talk about that later also. Um, so the, the other data that gets into the system is the real-time positioning of the tracks. Uh, the tracks all uh, have uh, positioning through the uh, GNSS uh, network and uh, probably they send information to the mobile network, to the proprietary uh, servers, uh, and then they are uh, published using a proprietary API, uh, which we had access uh, thanks to the, the municipality, which uh, luckily had a contract that forced the provider to grant access for custom developments. Uh, and and the, the, the tech, the staff from the company has been very helpful in guiding us to to access their data. I must say that their, their unfortunately their API is is not well documented. Uh, 
and it's not self-discoverable. So it's it's a REST API, but it's not self-discoverable. Um, so we need their help to in order to develop the, the solution. Actually, currently, uh, in the pandemic, we haven't had uh, much communication and and they made some upgrades and we haven't upgraded our system so currently the the communication is broken but as as soon as we reestablish uh, contact with them with the company we we hope to uh bring back the the bridge between uh, their their api and her programs um we also have access and this this is uh, fully functional we have access to the historical data of the trucks routes and we will use this data, this historical data, since the, the day they installed the GPS system on the tracks, to train a machine learning algorithm to uh, do the estimation of the time of arrival of a future position given the, the actual position of the track in, in real time. Uh, so let's talk about a little bit about this because it's given us some problems and I we want to share it because maybe you can give us suggestions on how to solve it. Um, so um, let me highlight a zone here. <clears throat> so you, if you had tried this before, so you, we have the, the points, uh, the, the GPS points, so the, the satellite positions of the track on a particular day. So we have all the points where, where the track uh, was uh, uh, passing by uh, with a one minute interval. And uh, a one minute interval is too long, even for a garbage collection track. Uh, many things can happen in one minute. So if if you can notice here the the white line with, with blue borders, um, if we just connect the points, it, it seems like the track has been passing through buildings and houses and that, that's not right. So connecting the points will not give the actual route the track traversed. So we need to do something else. Um, we couldn't find a, a ready-made solution for that. So we we tried something ourselves and we, we managed to obtain this from the from the satellite position. These red lines, uh, which nicely fit to the actual streets, uh, were um, obtained. Uh, you may be asking, how did we got them? Uh, so we used a routing algorithm, uh, but not in the traditional way. So we, we used it in a slightly different way. Uh, in this case, we used the Pyroot Leaf 3 um, routing algorithm by Oliver White and Mikolai Kuranowski. It's based on the A-star um, shortest path uh, algorithm. We use the car mode so to take uh, in consideration the direction of the traffic flow. And it is based on OpenStreetMap data. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we, we used it. <clears throat> and how did we, we use the algorithm? Well, basically, um, we uh, for for every pair of consecutive positions of the track which hopefully are close enough we run the routing algorithm to find the street route which would connect those two points uh, positions we then gather all those segments join them into a multiple range geospatial object and then we save uh, the complete route and and we can use it to train our machine learning algorithm or to to do some other analysis um however this is not yet working uh, all right um let, we we need to improve it it's a, i think it's a good starting point um but let me show you what's not working one of the things that's not working there are, there are several and turn right this way however uh, there are only three points in this part so one point here and in this intersection, uh, another point midway, and then another point uh, on the intersection when it turns right. So for some reason, and apparently it's uh, some kind of resolution problem, the middle point was not detected on the correct side of the avenue, but was detected on the other side. And because of the traffic flow, the routing algorithm uh, decided that the optimal route to get there is this loop around this uh, this park so uh, which which would be correct but it's not the, the if, if you want to get there that would be the correct route 
but it's not what the truck did. The, the, the truck just went uh, straight away. So this, this kind of situations we, we have to improve. We don't have the solution yet, so any suggestions are welcome. Um, and when we have that, we can build the, the, the last component that we are missing, which is the, the prediction of the time of arrival of the truck. Um, let's start wrapping up. Um, so what do we have? We have the data set of tracks since October 2018. It's, it's a pretty good amount of data to work with. We have pre-processed it until August 2019. Pre-processing means uh, basically normal normalization of the data because the, the, the provider in, in between changed the data format. Uh, actually, they, they changed the units of the speed, distance, they changed, they have changed the, the date strings, the timestamps. Uh, so we have to make everything homogeneous to, to be then automatically processed. Um, we have our web client mostly up and running, all the static parts, also the report form is working. Uh, we also have uh, the first batch of the environmental education material, like this picture on the right, showing the all the concepts of recycling, reusing, uh, etc. And the, this kind of information has already been released, some of it, uh, through social media channels. But as soon as we have the alpha version of our system, we will use the in-app notification also to make some kind of educational campaigns. Um, several components is, still need some work. so. Uh, however, most of them have more than 50% of the implementation done, so we should be soon having um, everything ready to the, the first trials. So, as I told you, we are trying to find out which uh, tool to used for notifications. Uh, we we have two in, in, in our site, Gotify, we have made some tests with it, and Air Notifier. Um, as I told you, we are migrating the mobile source base to Python using Kiwi, in particular uh, Kiwi MD material design. Uh, since we are using now material design in the app, we want to clean up the style of the website and try to match it to the to the MD look of the app. And we had to improve the security in the forms. They were in, in the testing phase and we didn't have much uh, security and we receive a lot of spam through the through the forms and that, that cannot happen when it goes official. So we need to to uh, enable all, all the security measures in, in the forms. Um, we need to improve the route ground truth algorithm, as I told you. Um, I would like to thank Vicky Vergara because yesterday after her talk about PG routing, we talked a, a little bit about this and she made um, very good suggestions. I, I think there are some ideas we can try and actually we, will, we are going to try next the PG routing algorithm and friends uh, to see if we can use it to, to improve this part. Um, that will allow us to, to start building the root prediction algorithm. Uh, which will use a machine learning algorithm, not yet determined, but I think we will start testing artificial neural networks uh, to do the prediction um, and maybe some, some other uh, more classic stochastic alternative also. And uh, when we have the alpha version, we don't need the root prediction to, to, to get our alpha version um, and we will carry out some live dry run test in the neighborhood and at the same time, we would like to do a workshop with uh, other providers beside the municipality, usually small entrepreneurs, uh, small businesses that uh, collect a specific kind of uh, garbage like paper, bottles, etc., electronic components. Um, maybe they would be interested in at least providing their contact information so users can find them easily through the, the same web app or mobile app. Um, just some final things I want to uh, emphasize. Uh, the feedback from the stakeholders was uh, essential to shape the solution in a more optimal way. Um, it, it happens a lot that even if you are a user and you're developing a solution as a user, you are not the only user. So if you keep your own, only your ideas, you may be lacking part of the uh, general view. So it's very important to consider everyone who is going to use your solution. Um, 
in this case was the municipality and, and the neighbors. So, so uh, that's very, very important. Uh, of course, it, it, trying to solve uh, or trying to develop a solution like this um, with a, such a compact team as we have, it wouldn't be possible without the huge amount of ready to use professional quality free and open source projects available. And of course, uh, thanks to the vibrant community behind those projects to 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 help uh, using them and keep developing them. Uh, in in our particular project and in many projects also, uh, we have a data processing component and this is taking a lot of effort. Um, and usually you have to pay attention to that if you want to build a robust solutions. Um, just some final acknowledgements, uh, thanks to the Universidad Hostal de Chile and the Innovin 2030 project for the financial support, the Municipalidad de Valdivia, which has been great in, in, in collaborating with us. Uh, they have given their time to provide feedback. They gave us access to the data set. Uh, we are very happy with their commitment. And Agustina Sua uh, also helped us with the survey activities in design and conducting the activity. And of course, we would like to thank the students who were on the field taking the, the, the answers of the survey. Um, these are the credits and licenses of all the materials found in the document. I hope I didn't forget anything. It is unintentional if it is so. And that's it. Thank you very much again for your attention. And if you have comments, or questions, I think there will be some time now. Thank you very much, Daniel. That was uh, very comprehensive and it's a very interesting solution that you developed there. Um, I'm looking at our uh, venulas uh, for um, uh, questions. I think the presentation has some sort of delay um, between the two, so um, maybe maybe the questions will come in about uh, 30 seconds or so um uh in the meantime uh, I'll, uh just tell everybody that um uh you can contact daniel probably on this on his email <laughs> uh, if you have any any more questions um and uh uh i'll just if um there is nothing coming uh, over. Um, we're gonna just take five minutes, uh, four minutes now, um, of a short break, so we can keep the schedule running uh, in the same parameters. Um, anybody that wants to tune in uh, should um, should uh, tune in at the right uh, time of the presentation. So um, I don't see any questions coming. <laughs> um, but I'm sure that uh, probably a lot of people will contact you in private. Um, yeah, sure, they can. They can contact me through either venue less. I will be around a little bit and by email. And I would like to thank and Andreas also. I think it's another presenter later because he's suggesting also some uh, solution for the routing problem we have. Thank you, Andreas. I'm sure you can have many, many good <laughs> discussions about this. Um, and I'm also happy that Vicky contributed. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to see the next stage <laughs> of this uh, implementation. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, I, I guess we will be showing further progress in, in following conferences. Um, there seem to be no other question no, no uh, from the audience, but uh, thank you very much, Daniel. Um, and looking forward to, to to talk to you more in Vancouver. Thank you. Have a nice close for you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.